is a facilitator provides the largest facility for the largest cohort of patients. We do a little over 2,000 cases of dialysis every month. And we have uh, around about 300 patients who are chronic dialysis. And so because of that, we utilize a lot of um, consumables which are uh, imported. And uh, we already have arrangements to get these imported, I mean, on, on, on a timely basis to avoid uh, situations like this. Unfortunately, as it turns out, some of the circumstances are not in immediate control. Issues with shipping, issues with documentation from the shipping lines have caused a delay in clearing of the of the you know the consumables from the port. But I'm happy to announce that as of yesterday, you know, all the approvals have been done and by yesterday the Minister of Finance and the Honorable Amin and then the the Minister of State and the Minister of Finance, Honorable Abino sorry, were all involved in the news that we've gotten the necessary paperwork so that to be able to, to clear the container from the port. However, in the meantime, we had also made arrangements to airlift some of the uh, consumables, uh, you know, and so we received these last, as of last night. These also arrived. So uh, we should be in a position to open the analysis service. So uh, we've been engaging with the renal patients, and uh, so there'll be no need for them to take because at the moment we've received a uh, quantity of consumables that can start the outpatient service, and then we can, you know, we are expecting that within the by today, tomorrow, the one from the port will also arrive. So we are grateful to all the stakeholders uh, who have supported us uh, to, you know, get us by and also for our, our patients for their, uh, you know, uh, their understanding in this uh, situation. However, I must say that the unit never closed out entirely. We always also we, we always kept open for inpatient I mean for emergencies and then um, you know uh, for the inpatient so um, that has been ongoing from I mean last week and so uh, we are going to we are going to be in the position now to open the uh, you know the the, the the facility for the outpatient but. Um, um, when when uh, when uh, when is the facility going to be open for the outpatients? Because that seems to be the main issue yeah, now. I'm when saying, I'm sure the, the items came in last night, and so even the, I'm sure the staff are not even aware because I was I've, I've been in the hospital overnight, so I was I was here to you know when the items uh, arrived. So the 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 you know it's it's a few minutes to wait. So once the morning staff coming, we'll we we'll, 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 we'll take delivery of the items, and I'm sure to announce to the patients to start showing up for their session. So will that be done later today, or are we looking at tomorrow? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I expect that it can be done, because the items are in. We were just what we were waiting for, so once they have been there's no reason to delay any further. Mm. But I'm, as I said, I'm here to communicate this to the leadership of the Renalty, because they were, they were you know, they had those, when the, 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 the items arrived in the night. Right. So these are some of the items, not all of them, but some of them have been cleared. Some of you mentioned that some of them have been airlifted, and so we are going to start with this. Will it be okay, enough to okay. deal? Okay. okay, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. So, so what happens is that we have actually cleared a, a 20 footer container. We have two containers that were some of the items. We had cleared a 20 footer container last week. Okay, but when the 20 footer container came in, the items, the items have been passed the fact that some of the this candidate uh, uh, staff were, were not in the input container, or the parts that were in it were not insufficient to run the full outpatient service. And so they are in the, port, they are in the 40 foot container, which we now have uh, to go ahead to, 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 to be integrated with this from the port. But then in the meantime, just to so that we, we, you know, to avoid that, we had also tried to, to airlift some directly. So the airlifted ones, unfortunately, you know, these things are sometimes uh, happen, you know, they're, 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 there was a delay with the uh, person bringing the, you know, the, 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 the cargo missed the impediment. So it was supposed to come on Turkish Airlines, it missed the flight, so we had to take it in on Embry. So we took delivery of it last night. And so uh, now we have reasonable stock to start the outpatient service as well, you know, because we are only we are doing the inpatient and emergency. So now we, we are in a position to start the outpatient service. I'm sorry, this is a new development because the items just arrived last time. But then, we are also clearing the 40 foot uh, container, which will have stock to last for, you know, between six months and a year. So, uh, with the patients who are threatening to picket from tomorrow, what is your message to them? 
Yes, yeah, so our message to them is that they should stay calm and that we've received and uh, the 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 the, the, the needed consumables to start the outpatient service. So there's no need for them to and take the criticism. But I think even their leader, as of last night, they they had they had been an engagement with their leader and he had been assured. And so he told I mean he, on a sister station he, he, he I mean he did say that he, I mean at that time he thought that there was no need for them to take the action and that well, well, we spoke. We spoke to him this morning, uh, Bafwa in Krakuju. We spoke. We spoke yeah. to him this morning, even before uh, we called you. And uh, he he was saying that he will uh, come and check today and see uh, if there is no clear yeah, so, way forward. Yeah, so, then they will start picketing from tomorrow. Yeah, but uh, well, so, so you can come in and check. But uh, there's, there's no need for that now, unless you know. But there's, I don't think there's any need for that now. And now the items are in, so there's no need for. So just to be clear on the timelines, uh, from later on today, will the outpatients uh, start receiving, you know, some yeah, so some dialysis later on from today? Yeah, so that's what the, that's that's the plan. Because what you what the staff were waiting for was to receive uh, the those items. So once the items are in, there's no reason why outpatient dialysis cannot start. Right. But but uh, why, why do we face some of these problems with the renal units, you know? What is usually the process for clearing these consumables? And uh, how much of a challenge really uh, is it when it comes to also money to do to do this? Uh, no, it's, it, I, don't, I don't think it's a, it's a financial issue. Okay. The issue is not a financial issue. Okay. So, I mean, last year, last year, there was a financial issue in the sense that we had... Okay, so let me let me let me explain the, 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 the problem for you. Okay. Last year, we had, last year, yes, there was a financial issue. That financial issue arose because for from 2017 up to last year, and um, Kolebu City also was providing dialysis service for about 230 renal patients free of charge, and the bill was being taken up by a philanthropist, the first guy group. Okay, we are because we have noticed that our patients were not in a position to afford these services, and a lot of them were dying. So we looked around to see if we could get some support, because as you know, at that time, the daily services were not covered at all in the uh, range of services covered by the health insurance scheme. So this uh, 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 philanthropist was then supporting us in that way. And then in 2020, when COVID hit, the philanthropist couldn't keep up with the payments because, of course, you know, every company was affected. But then he told that he was committed to making it up when, uh, you know, uh, business gets better. And so we had a decision to take as to whether we should continue to provide the daily services, not knowing when payment to be made, or we should stop providing the free services so that our patients pay for. But we knew that if we decide to stop the service, there are many of them who wouldn't for them if we are able to resume in the future. We're not sure how many of them will be alive to enjoy that free service in the future. And so we took a decision that we would, you know, um, rather manage on providing the service and hoping that things will get better. And so that's all we did. So in 25, 2022, the philanthropist had made up or paid the amount that he had, I mean, he had guaranteed. But then this was in cities. And as you know, we pay in euros uh, for the consumables. And you know what the, happened to the exchange rate in 2022. So that's how come the units ran into that 4 million cities deficit that we were talking about last year. But it was because we prioritized saving the lives of the patients over just trying to recover cost. And so that's how we got into that situation. And so we were having some challenges with the supplier delivering the consumables. And so that's how, um, because we are running some that difficulty, we have to restrict the service. So we're still looking after emergencies and inpatients. But we ask the outpatients to, in the meantime, whilst we try to get the issue resolved, they should um, patronize the services uh, of the other facilities, you know. Uh, and for them was that Kulibu is the only place where they could get it fee of charge in, in, in that sense. And so that is why there was a lot of agitation. But then the, the, the what was lost in all this was that Kolebu had been you know, doing all this uh, for the patients free of charge. And if you can ask me to join crime, so I'm going to tell you that Kolebu teaching us those service, although uh, we are not recovering, because it's the best in terms of the quality of it and the outcomes and all that. And when all the other facilities have got challenges with their 
uh, in your service or they have complicated the patient, it is pretty good that they refer them to. And so this is this, so that was the background mm. for last year's uh, uh, you know challenge. Right. This year um, mm-hmm. we have gotten so as of last year the uh, Ministry of Finance uh, through the uh, advocacy of the Minister of Health came in with uh, uh, you know m- uh, funds the formula to pay off that deficit we had incurred because of the exchange rate losses. Okay. Yeah. And so and so and so now that we have sorted this out of the supplier, we will now resume the supply. But for this particular shipment, you know, there was, you know, a bit of delay with the with the shipment in the first place. But there's, you know, the, the things have been packed about uh, from about May or so. They had been packaged to be shipped, and then the tenant were having difficulty in getting a shipping line uh, which will bring it. So this is like the global supply chain situation that we have been affected by. And then when the item did arrive at the port, the shipper was supposed to release the paperwork to process quickly and then also we have to get we really get uh, uh, some waiver and discount on the taxes and so on so that that is the cost to the, i mean to the to the institution will be reduced and so but we needed the paperwork to be able to process that and that there was some delay in getting that paperwork through from the shipping line and so this is what our location and then this and so we hope that that will not happen but then going forward mm-hmm. okay because we, we are also trying to avoid this kind of problems in the future. And so that's how come the minister, we had a discussion with the Minister for Health. And so the Minister for Health has, uh, uh, is procuring 30 additional dialysis machines for Kulibu. But the key. Yeah, that, yeah we heard of that. Has, has the facility received those 30 dialysis machines yet? Yeah, so they, 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 are being, they are being imported by the, the, by the, uh, the, the, the supplier. So, so, but right, so they are not here yet. Yes, yeah, see, so why we have, we've been having this court is that. Um, we've been getting our um, dialysis machines and supplies from one single source, which is uh, the community of uh, you know, who are, were like one of the global leaders in this uh, business. And so because we are different one source, so when there's any problem with that source, there becomes a challenge. And so, uh, I mean, well, you know, so now going forward, we uh, the minister is wisdom so that we should source from another source. And so this is something that we all agreed on, that this is the way to go, so that once we have those 30 machines coming in from another source, and and the, the good thing is that for these new machines, their consumables can be sourced from various points in the open market. And so this you know, gives us more degrees of freedom in terms of procuring the consumables so that a, a bottleneck in one supply chain does not cripple the system like it has done. Right. Right. So, um, this 30 dialysis machines that are yet to come in, you know, that are coming in, how, how important is it to your facility in terms of, you know, this intervention uh, that you are doing well, it, for the renal patients, would you say? Yeah, so it is, it is very, very welcome and very, very, very important because at the moment, like I told you, we have almost 300 patients on dialysis. And each patient goes on the machine for about four hours. So you can imagine the kind of queue. So our staff have to run 24 hours, basically, to cover. the And then it's also inconvenient for our patients because they have to come in and queue. And then the other thing also that we concern about is that if we have people on the machines and an emergency comes, it means the emergency has to wait maybe uh, for somebody to get off the machine before they can be analyzed. So, but when we get these 30 additional machines, one is going to reduce... The, 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 you know, the, 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 the waiting time for our patients. So it means that most of them can even come in and do it during the day and go about their normal business. They don't have to come at dawn and come and, you know, wait and all that. It will do that. And then also it means that we also have some on standby for emergency so that if you come in with a dire emergency, you can be put on the machine almost straight away. So that is, that is what it will do for us. And then also the third thing is that because of the fact that we can sort these consumables from the open market and from a variety of of, of, of sources, it means that then we will not have this constraint where if there's a challenge with one particular source, then we are we, we, are, we run into this kind of difficulty. Very well, Doc. Uh, I'm grateful that you've spoken to us this morning here and uh, clarifying these issues, at least that uh, we can heave a sigh of relief because uh, we, 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 can, we can see that some progress has been made. Thank you very much, Doc. Hey, you're most welcome. And thank you to everybody for the time. Right. Uh, you've just heard us speak to Dr. Poku Wari Ampoma. Uh, he is the CEO of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, explaining to us uh, why all of those delays and what has been done about it. So you heard him there say uh, that from later on today, 
the outpatients can begin to do their dialysis treatment. And that's what uh, we're looking for. Uh, talking about paperwork, delaying, clearing of the goods from the ports. And it's a, it's a, it's a supply chain issue. Well, uh, we hope that in future it doesn't happen again. Like he explains, uh, they are putting in place measures to make sure that we don't see it again. And that is what actually has to happen. We don't have to put ourselves in a position where we face all of these problems, where people's lives are at stake. We don't want to see that happen. It's six minutes after 8 a.m. You're still listening to The Morning Star here on Star 103.5 FM. Stay tuned. When we return, there's more.